we have come to the end of the Bruce Willis countdown. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals, because today we are watching Die Hard. The number one Christmas movie of all time and my favorite Bruce Willis movie of all time. Again, this is all to help those fighting back against FTD, like Bruce Willis and his family and many, many others. So if you want to support this cause, please donate to the AFTD using the link on the page. Thank you so much for those of you who did donate. And let's try to end this donation drive with a bang. And speaking of bangs, this movie is a real banger. So let's go check it out because this is Red Eye Reviews. So, this movie was actually filmed at the 20th Century Fox's headquarters. This way they could do, you know, whatever they wanted to, stunts-wise and explosion-wise, and they didn't have to upset their landlords. However, I did learn that they charged themselves rent to use the space, which I just kind of find hilarious. But because many of the floors were actively being used as offices, they could only use empty floors to film. And, you know, they promised to be really, really quiet when it came to shooting each other and blowing things up. Actually, they were forced to film action scenes after business hours because so many people in the building complained. I don't know, I guess hearing people shouting for their lives and firing guns, yeah, it doesn't make great background noise for Karen's conference call. Who knew? However, we start with the man on a plane. The man that if he were a holiday... He would be Christmas, because it's my favorite one. But we talk with this guy who tells us that taking our shoes off in public is the greatest thing ever and that we should totally try it sometime. After you get where you're going, take off your shoes and your socks. What he doesn't tell us is that taking our shoes off around broken glass and men who want to kill you is a bad idea. But when we land, we meet Argyle. It's his first time driving a limo. It's my first time driving a limo. And it's our first time riding in one. I didn't know you were going to sit up front. But Argyle's professionalism drops, like, almost instantly. So you divorced? So are your lady live out here? Thought she wasn't going to make it out here, and she'd come crawling up back to you. So why bother to back, right? (laughs) So, getting closer than we thought we would to this guy, we arrive at Nakatomi Plaza to meet our wife for her company Christmas party. This jerk at the front desk makes us look her up in the computer. I'm here to see Holly McLean. Just type it in there. Then reveals that everyone in the building is on the 30th floor right now. They're the only ones left in the building. Take the express elevator. Come on, you you already knew where she would be. You just wanted to show off your fancy little touchscreen, didn't you? But we meet her boss. Then you must be John McLean. Joe Takagi. We find our wife. John. And we meet the biggest douchebag in movie history. Show him the watch. It's a Rolex. It's just a small token of appreciation for all our hard work. Now, if that isn't the most punchable face in Hollywood, then what is? Uh, Okay, well, Jim Parsons. Yeah, Jim Parsons definitely has the most punchable face in Hollywood. But I digress. Downstairs, the terrorist squad shows up. Not only does Alan Rickman just absolutely kill it as Hans Gruber, but this was his first film role ever. Seriously, like he was a phenomenal stage actor before this, but I don't think anybody would have thought that he'd crush this role as hard as he did. So they begin their building takeover and upstairs, old Brucey Pooh takes his shoes off. Son of a bitch. Dude, you should have worn a pair of those trendy little toad running shoes that were so popular for like 10 days that one time. (laughs) But he runs upstairs to regroup. Meanwhile, they take our boss Takagi into a room and they demand his code to the vault on the floor. What kind of terrorist are you? The code, please. I'm telling you, you're just going to have to kill me. Okay. And that didn't go too great. 
However, upstairs, John pulls the fire alarm to get the cops to show up. Uh. <laughs> oh, you stupid motherfuckers! No, no! Turn the fucking truck around! However, however, they realize that they're the LAPD, and they shouldn't be this responsive on the first call, so they just go home. So this blonde-haired nerd shows up, we get in a fight. We take his radio, and we send the goons a message. Please remember, now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Meanwhile, John calls the police again. This channel is reserved for emergency calls only. No fucking shit, lady! Do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? And these cops are the worst. Now! See if there's a black and white that can do a drive-by. They even hear gunfire, and they're like, ugh. Sir, can, can you turn it down, sir? It, it's rude to interrupt somebody while they're talking. But he gets chased off the roof. He crawls down that same shaft that Darth Maul, Emperor Palpatine, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi again, and Han Solo fell down. You know, only Han at least had the decency of staying dead after he fell. However, the Force is strong with this one, and he doesn't die. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. The only intelligent cop in the entire movie shows up. He's driving his car, Stevie Wonder? No signs of disturbance, dispatch. I do see a guard inside. I'm gonna go in for a closer look. He starts walking around looking for Steve Urkel. Meanwhile, upstairs, this man does the worst job ever trying to kill somebody. <laughs> Just shoot the table. Shoot, shoot right in the middle, right in the middle. As our new best friend goes to leave the building, John graciously invites him to the party. Let it snow. Uh, start time, right now. Dress code? Nah, nah, pretty casual, pretty casual. Shoes? Optional. So, more cops roll up. The local media also hears about it, and they do what they do best, which is just piss everybody off. Back inside, John and Hans play the guessing game. You're most troublesome for a security guard. <laughs> Who are you, then? Afterwards, while the best friendship in cinema history is forming, Principal Vernon rolls up. He gives us two months of detention and then tries to pretend like he has answers. Powell, has it occurred to you he could be one of the terrorists pulling your chain? He could be a fucking bartender for all we know. He sends these special cops to try to enter the building. However, this is L.A. And what they didn't realize is that most of these cops aren't cops. They're, in fact, actors. Yeah, they thought this was an improv theater, and they realized that they might be in over their heads right now. So, they get wrecked. We bring in an armored car, but again, it's a movie prop. Yeah, uh, turns out it's just some leftover from that last Batman movie that nobody actually watched to try and save his fellow actors from starting another SAG strike, we throw some explosives down the elevator shaft. Geronimo, motherfucker. Outside, Principal Cop tries to hand us double secret probation and we couldn't care less. This is Deputy Chief of Police Dwayne T. Robinson. I've got 100 people down here, and they're covered with glass. Who gives a shit about glass? Who the fuck is this? I'm not the one who just got butt-fucked on national TV, Dwayne. Meanwhile, Senior VP of Douche hasn't had enough screen time, and he's here to negotiate. You're here to negotiate, am I right? You're amazing. You figured this all out already. Hans. Bobby. He talks to John on the radio. He pretends that they are best friends. Told him we were old friends and you were my guest at the party. 
We also see this goon pours him some Coke, and it's like all foam. There's no soda in there. Come on, our man likes Coke more than this. Uh, I mean, we all saw him earlier in the movie. But that did not go as planned, and he gets killed. John. And uh, kind of did us all a favor, really. You know, pro probably got Holly a promotion at the company, so... Uh, that's kind of what we call a twofer. At one point, Hans is double-checking the explosives, and he runs into our guy. Hi there. And he thinks fast. No, 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 can we please? I managed to get out of there. He knows this is an engineering company, and that most engineers are nerdy little weenies. So, he, he, he thinks this is a good plan, okay? He gives our new, totally American friend a test. Now to use a handgun, Bill. Time for the real thing, Bill. And he fails immediately. Go down the gun. No bullets. You think I'm fucking stupid, Hans? However, it doesn't even matter because the cavalry shows up. <laughs> we search for the room with the most glass in the entire building. Oh, and our poor, poor feet. I I once looked at glass and it cut me. Yeah, true story. That's, that stuff is evil. So while he picks glass out of his feet, our friend downstairs tries to take our mind off of our problems. I shot a kid. Well, uh, that would do it. Glass? What glass? Uh, like the movie? Uh, pretty good Manight Shyamalan stuff. He has his moments. But outside, the FBI show up. They turn off the power, which is exactly what Hans Bubby wanted to get the vault open. Good job, guys. You go get those Barry Bonds. I don't know why you want those things anyways. I mean, the man was a legend, but he took a ton of steroids to do it. So, you know, do his records really count? Oh, Barry Bonds. Huh. No, I never heard of her. I, I, maybe, maybe it's like his sister or something. I don't know. Meanwhile, realizing that leading dirty bag number one has been killed, our reporter steps up to take his role. This is the last time these kids are going to have to speak to their parents. You let me in right now or I call the INS. Comprende? Oh, I really wish Samuel Jackson was in this movie. That guy would get handled. So at some point, Carl, the one with beautiful hair, finds our man and they get in a very audible punching contest. And thanks to that media D-bag, Gruber realizes Holly is John's wife. So he takes her, he sends everybody else to the roof. And after dealing with the walking L'Oreal commercial, he heads to the roof himself. He's screaming about some bomb or something. The FBI shows up in a choppa, and they make things worse. Oh, John, what the fuck are you doing? They force us to jump off the roof in the coolest way imaginable. And the FBI go FBI by. Gonna need some more FBI guys, I guess. Meanwhile, down in the garage, Argyle's sweater is still here. <laughs> He's here. Uh, he forgot he had a job. He's been partying and drinking booze with a giant teddy bear this whole time. But he sees the sketchy bad guy try to set up their getaway vehicle, and he takes him out. Now, finally, John arrives for the showdown. Hans! He's just exhausted from everybody making his day harder for no reason. And he pretends to give up. Mine, this is mine. yippee motherfucker. <laughs> Only his wife knows him too well. She's like, 
My husband does not laugh. Uh Uh-uh. Now, something is not right here. (laughs) Easily my favorite fact about this whole thing is this look of shock right here is 100% genuine. Alan Rickman was really nervous to do this stunt because they were actually dropping him 40 feet onto a giant airbag. So he insisted that they count down from three so that he could prepare for the fall. However, those cheeky little buggers dropped him on two, and he was not ready for it. I mean, clearly. Later in an interview, Alan Rickman actually said that the stunt was done on his last day on set purposefully so that he couldn't be mad at them. But he fell. It's over. They all head outside. Everything seems to be fine. But then Carl, his beautiful conditioned hair must have shielded his neck from that chain. Probably crawled up it to safety like Rapunzel. But our new best friend uses his six-shooter and he takes him out. Argyle shows up, hoping he hasn't been fired yet and can still get paid. And then, we punch the most punchable face in Hollywood. What are your feelings? (laughs) I'm just kidding. It's still Jim Parsons. (laughs) Come on. Just look at him. I am right. I am right. Look at him. But Argyle takes them home, and Mrs. Barra Bonds is safe for another day. So let's head on over to Red Eye Reacts. You think the baby can handle a little sip? That baby's ready to tend bar. Are you too casually joking about drinking while pregnant? Do you want the baby's head to be half its body? Throw quite a party. I didn't realize they celebrated Christmas in Japan. They sure do. Yeah, they celebrate Christmas hard. Have you ever seen KFC Christmas? I'm not kidding. It's insane. Everybody in Japan goes to KFC and eats chicken on Christmas. It sounds like I'm making it up. I am not. I mean terrorists in the world, and I gotta kill one with feet smaller than my sister. I have a request. What idiot put you in charge? You did. If there's terrorists in there, where's their list of demands? We don't know shit, pal. There's hostages. How come nobody's come to us with ransom? Our police chief acts like every adult in a horror movie ever. There's nothing bad going on here. Dishes throw themselves against the wall all the time. I don't know. Maybe it was windy. Early stages of the Helsinki syndrome. As in Helsinki, Sweden. Finland. Basically... I'm Agent Johnson. This is Special Agent Johnson. I'm Agent Johnson, and I'm Agent Johnson, and we're from the FBI. He's still alive. Only John can drive somebody that crazy. Don't try to stop me. Oh, my God. His neck is so thick, I feel like he's just going to swing and dangle around for a really long time. That's what it is. And that is it. 10 movies, 10 videos, 25 days. And I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm kind of sad it's over. I've decided to just turn these videos into lifetime donations. So these links will always be present on the Bruce Willis videos. So if you weren't able to donate this month, I would love it if you could donate at some point in the future. I will also be donating for all new subscribers this month as well. So, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. A huge shout out to the patrons. They deserve a round of applause as well for helping curate this list. I also dropped a Patreon exclusive review for the story of Ricky today as a little Christmas present. That review can only be viewed on Patreon. It was not allowed on YouTube. So, please go and check it out if you want to. Link down below to sign up there. My Discord down below. My merch store down below. A very Merry Christmas. A Happy Hanukkah. A Happy Kwanzaa. I will see you in the new year. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy. He crawls down that same shaft that Darth Maul, Emperor Palpatine, 
Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi again, and Han Solo fell down. You know, only Han at least had the decency of staying dead after he fell. 